I'm outside this morning because this week we're talking about the desert fathers and mothers. And in the fourth century, the desert fathers and mothers decided to leave the cities and go out into the wilderness to preach and teach and be quiet in the stillness of the wilderness to learn about themselves and God, to make their faith stronger. So I invite you to join me today in my little piece of wilderness. Give me a word. 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 And someone came to him and said, Teacher, what good thing shall I do that I may attain eternal life? And he said to him, why do you ask me about what is good? There is only one who is good, and if you wish to enter into life, keep the commandments. Then he said to him, Which ones? And Jesus said, You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and mother also. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, All these things I have kept, what am I still lacking? If you wish to be perfect, go, sell your possessions, and give the money to the poor. You will have treasure in heaven. Then, come, follow me. But when the young man heard this statement, he went away grieving, for he was one who owned much property. And Jesus said to his disciples, Truly I tell you, it will be hard for a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. When the disciples heard this, they were very astonished and said, Then who can be saved? 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 Then who will be saved? Then who can be saved? Then who can be saved? Then who can be saved? And looking at them, Jesus said to them, For mortals, it is impossible. But for God, all things are possible. Give me a word. Give me a word. The desert fathers and mothers went out into the wilderness, went out into the desert land around Palestine and in Egypt and Northern Africa. They were trying to find solitude and a place to be alone and a place to seek and experience what it meant to follow God and to be with God. And so they asked, God to give them a word. Give me a word. But the thing that they encountered when they decided to go out into the wilderness was people wanted to learn from them, wanted to experience from them what they have found out about God, wanted to share in that knowledge and learn from it. 
And so while they were out there living in caves or in their little in their monasteries, people would come up to them and say, Abba, Amma, give me a word so that I might be saved. It reminds me of the story we heard today about Jesus. Jesus has someone come to him and say, Teacher, what good thing shall I do that I may obtain eternal life? Jesus, what can I do? What deeds can I do that I can have abundant life? Jesus, what deeds can I do that I won't be stopped by this life, that I will experience more, that I will obtain eternal life? And Jesus looked at him and said, why are you asking me what to do? There is only one who is good. God is the one who is good. He said, if you want to experience abundant life, if you want to be so full of God that you live a life that you haven't been so far, keep my commandments. The young man asked Jesus what those commandments are, and he says, you shall not commit murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and mother. Love your neighbor as yourself. And the young man looked at Jesus and said, I've done all that. I've kept all those commandments. And Jesus looked at him and said, there's still one thing you're lacking. There's one more thing you need to be complete, to be full, to experience life abundantly, to sense God in your midst, to be full of the Spirit. There is just one more thing that you need to do to be complete. Go, sell your possessions and give to the poor. And come and follow me. When the young man heard that, that he had to sell everything he had, that he had to give what he had to the poor. He went a great grieving, for he owned much. And Jesus talked about how hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. And the disciples look at him and say, then who can be saved? Then who can be saved? That young man came and asked Jesus for a word, a word that would share with him how to be saved, a word that would share with him about life abundant, a word that would tell him what it meant to be complete. He asked for a word, a word that would save him. And yet he couldn't take that word. Give me a word. That's what pilgrims came to the monks to ask. There's a story told about one of the desert fathers, Abba Hirex. A fellow monk came to him and said, give me a word, how can I be saved? The aged one responded, sit in your cell, and if you're hungry, eat. If you're thirsty, drink. Only do not speak evil of anyone, and you will be saved. Another monk asked Abba Basil, to give him a word. The Abba responded, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart. Twenty years later, that same monk returned in search of another word, to which the Abba responded, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Give me a word. What an interesting prayer for us to practice, right? To stop, to be still, and to ask God, give me a word. Show me how I can be complete. Show me how I can find life abundant. Show me what it means to be saved. Give me a word. But sometimes that takes, word takes a long time. Like that Abba invited the monk to sit in his room and to just eat to not speak evil and to drink when thirsty, to be still and quiet, to not gossip, to let everything else go except the thing that will you need to keep alive, drinking and eating. 
and then you'll be saved. Or the other one who got told first, love God. It took him 20 years to experience that, to figure out what it meant to love God. And then 20 years later, when he still wasn't sure if he was saved, he came back for another word, and the word he got was, love your neighbor. What word do you need to hear today? What word do you need to come into you that will save you, that will complete you, that will make you whole? The desert fathers and mothers wanted us to practice silence, to avoid temptation, and to replace judgment with prayer. They want us to experience the world differently. So there's a story told about a brother who had committed a sin and was going to be judged by the community he was living in. When the elders summoned the brother and summoned Abba Moses to the meeting, Abba Moses found an old basket full of holes and he filled it with sand and dragged it behind him. When the elders asked, what is this? Abba Moses responded, my sins are running out behind me. I do not see them. And today I come to judge the sin of another. The elders said nothing but chose to pardon the errant brother. That in their search for what it meant to be and live an abundant life, they realized that they needed time alone. They needed to deal with their temptations. They needed to deal with what prevented them from being in contact with God. And they needed to replace judgment with prayer. They needed to take seriously that when Jesus said you forgive 70 times 70, that he meant it. That none of us are able to cast the first stone because none of us are without having committed sins against God. And yet they teach us to stop. That even if we believe that there is nothing we can do to obtain the abundant life, even if we are worried that there's no way we can be complete, that we can be whole in the presence of God, they model for us a way of doing that, a way of stopping and being still and inviting God to give you the words you need to hear to take you on the next step, the next path, to give you the next piece of the puzzle to being complete. They teach us that sometimes we have to get outside. We have to go to the places where there aren't people. We have to be in the stillness and quiet of nature. We have to listen to the birds singing and the butterflies buzzing around us. We have to stop and be still. And in that silence, ask God to give us a word. May God give you the word you need to hear this week. The word that will help you be complete. That will help you find the abundant life. Give me a word. you to breathe in deeply and breathe out. I invite you to breathe in and breathe out. 
I invite you to ask Jesus to give you a word. Give me a word. Give me a word. Give me a word, God. I need you to give me a word. It's been another hard week. Statues are falling and names are changing. We see more police violence with cops shooting at windows. We see protesters shot by armed men. We are worried about all these changes and all this pain. We need a word that helps us understand all these changes. Give me a word. God, give me a word. God, things are starting to open up, but there are still more cases of COVID-19 and still more deaths. We are itching to get out to see our friends, to eat at our favorite restaurants, to hug our grandchildren. Yet we also want to stay safe. We are worried about our family members who are out of work, who are anxious and depressed. We need a word of healing and love. Give me a word. God, this week we pause to think about fathers. We remember our fathers and those who's, who acted as fathers to us. We ask both blessing and forgiveness for the ways we were a good enough father and the places where we fell short. We remember our fathers and grandfathers who've passed on into the next life. We lift up those who are in the throes of fatherhood with children and babies. We ask you to give us a word. Show us what it means to be the father you need us to be. Strengthen us with our actions. Give me a word, God. Give me a word for the questions I don't dare ask. Give me a word for the struggle I face every day. Give me a word. As we pray together the prayer that your son taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In the upside down world of the gospel, we measure our wealth not by what we have, by what, by what we can give away. This is your chance to take a moment and think about what you can give to our congregation to help us to continue to live the upside down gospel of love. Let us pray. God, you call us to leave behind our preoccupations and to follow you into the future. Sometimes we find your call challenging. We are comfortable, maybe even complacent. May this act of giving be a gesture of our willingness to follow where you will lead. Amen. And if nobody told you today that I love you, remember that Jesus loves you and always will. That God loves you and always will.
much that I love you and always will. May you act on that love and may you ask God to give you a word. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.